Welcome all. Children, today we are going to learn about a lesson of food production and management from plants. India is a agriculture dependent country. And depending on the agriculture the farmers perform, we get our food. Most of the food products which are obtained, they are from plants. The plants which are grown in large number to get useful food products are known as crops. And this process of cultivation of crops on a large scale, it is called agriculture. In India, the farmers grow a variety of crops like rice, wheat, jowar, basra, pulses and sugarcane, groundnut, cotton, tea, etc. Some crops like jowar, red gram takes a minimum of 180 days for the harvesting. Such type of crops which take long term or 180 days for harvesting, those are called as long term crops. But some crops like green gram, black gram, they take only 100 days for harvesting or short period of time. Such crops which take only less period of time for harvesting, those are called as short term crops. Like that we eat different types of fruits, vegetables. All these fruits and vegetables are not grow, grown throughout the year. Some Vegetables like brinjal, cauliflower, tomatoes, peas particularly, they are available in winter season. And some vegetables or fruits like mango, jack, watermelon, they are available in summer season. So, we know that water is essential for growing of crops. In rainy season, ponds, wells, ditches, they are pooled with water. So hence farmers they grow variety of crops in rainy season and they get harvested during the winter season. That's why large number of fruits, vegetables, very fresh they are available in winter season. And the crops which are grown in rainy season they are termed as karif crops. In Arabic language karif means rain. So the crops which are grown in rainy season they are called as karif crops. The crops like paddy, chilli, sugarcane, cotton, moong, turmeric, jowar, all these they are grown in rainy season and they are karif crops. And some crops they require less amount of water and those are grown only in winter season that is from October to March or April. And they are generally called as rabi crops. In Arabic language rabi means winter. Crops like wheat, maize, coriander, fenugreek, barley, they are grown in winter season and are called as rabi crops. Karif crops are grown during June to October and rabi crops are grown during October to March and April. Along with the season, crop production is also based on flowering of the plants. After conducting many experiments, the scientists invented those main reasons for the flowering of a plant. The flower will come out from the plant after certain growth. In some plants, flowering takes place after certain growth, growing certain height, branches, formation, nodes formation and then after producing 7 to 9 leaves. Flowering of plant also depends upon the duration of night. The effect of night duration in flowering plants differ from plant to plant. In some plants, when the night duration is shorter than 12 and a half hours, the flowering will be more. And in some plants, when the night duration is more than 12 and a half hours, the flowering will be more. For example, wheat plants, flowering takes place only in short night durations. As long as the night duration becomes longer, that is more than 12 and a half hours, the wheat plants do not flower. In addition to that, temperature is also not sufficient for the seed formation. So these are called short night plants. And plants like maize, cotton, flowering will be more when the night duration is more than 12 and a half hours. These are called long night plants. In some plants, night duration is not at all a reason for flowering. They can give flowers at any time during the year. Example, soya bean. And these plants are called as night neutral plants. If we cultivate wheat crop in the month of July, it takes 8 to 10 weeks for growing. 
after that flowering will takes place by that time it would be the october then the night duration extends more than 12 and half hours so if we cultivate wheat in karif season the flowering will not takes place and seed formation will not occur but if we grow wheat in the month of october or in ravi season the night duration after certain growth the plants when start flowering the night duration reduces and we get hot climate from february onwards which is a suitable climate for the maturation of grains and for the formation of flower also that is the reason why wheat is cultivated in rabi season only by keeping this in mind farmers they cultivate some crops in rabi season and some in karif we know that paddy is cultivated in both rabi and karif seasons now let us see how the cultivation of paddy is carried out in our state rice is the main crop or prime crop most essential important food in our state it is also called as global grain rice was cultivated in the late mesolithic period 9000 to 8000 bc and even in harappan civilization 2300 bc also it is grown as a karif or a rabi crop from rajasthan to arunachal pradesh and from kerala to jammu and kashmir although it is a crop of the warm tropical wetlands it also grows in the cooler climate temperature regions like china japan and australia even though india has largest area of land under cultivation in the world its productivity rate is low because there is no proper rain in india people depend only on monsoon which is irregular and sometimes there is not even in a frame fall seeds of rice used in india are not of good quality the quality of soil is being poor by the regular growth of crops and by more usage of fertilizers moreover there is poor irrigation given to the plants the paddy growing fields divided into so many plats called kayalu or madulu to obtain better yields farmers prepare a plan beforehand while planning they take into account of the nature of soil humidity rainfall and temperature may june months are best for the growth of rice at the time farmers celebrate festival like eruvaka rice growing is a seasonal task associated with many festivals in india the festivals associated with the rice cultivation are akshay trutiya and harvesting associated with pongal and onam agriculture tasks are carried out to the tune and rhythm of certain songs also the cultivation of paddy involves a series of activities starting from the preparation of the soil to storage of the grains agricultural practices are carried out either by using manpower or through special tools commonly in the karif rabi and the third crop called zayed also the paddy is grown first step in the paddy cultivation is preparing the soil to germinate the seeds properly for uniform water supply soil should be prepared well for this plowing and leveling are done plowing and applying manure the farmers make nursery plots in these nursery plots first plow and soil plank being pulled by a pair of bullocks or by using tractors the nursery might be first covered with manure and then flooded with water flooding submerges the weeds which decompose and make them into nutrients before growing crops proper plowing of the soil is necessary it enables water to store deeply for long time in the soil roots they can penetrate into deep and can respire well soil friendly microorganisms and earthworms can grow well when the soil is soft and and four or harmful microorganisms die due to sun rays the instruments used for plowing are a t shaped plow it is used for weeding also it is made up of iron and wood 
At the end of the plow, a chisel like iron nail is attached to it, which help in penetrating into the soil. The V shaped ridges are formed while plowing. This helps for better watering of the crops. The fields have a lot of ups and downs even after plowing. So, by using a leveler, farmers they level the soil. This leveling enables for the equal distribution of water and nutrients. Next, sowing of the seeds. Selection of the seeds is an important step in agriculture. Before see sowing, farmers select good quality seeds. The healthy seeds give healthy crop. After harvesting, farmers select wrinkle-free, round-shaped and more weighed seeds and store them for the future crop. These good quality seeds are sown in the soil. The name Oriza for paddy, which was named by Linnaeus. Thousands of varieties of paddy are being cultivated around the world. Oriza sativa is cultivated in Asia. Oriza glabrima is cultivated in Africa. Oriza glumpatella is cultivated in America. And in our state, paddy varieties like Molagolkulu, Amritasari, Bangarutiga, Kolleti Kusuma, Sona Masuri, etc. In paddy, the seeds by sprinkling all over the field, they are sown. This method of dispersing seeds by sprinkling is called broadcasting. Another method of seed sowing is by using seed drill. Modern method by using tractors and seed drills, seeds are sown. In these plots, the plants grow to certain heights. Then farmer pick up the seedlings from the plots and make bundles and they are transplanted all over the field. And this is called as notlu. The paddy variety strivery requires much gap between the plants. Or by using a modern pla paddy planter, it is useful to the farmers, those who cultivate paddy on large scale, they sow or plant the saplings. The growing rice crop is attractive food for moth, caterpillars, paddy beetles, aphids, grasshoppers, etc. They eat the leaves, bore into root and stems and cause damage to the entire crop. To control these pes pesticides might be dusted or sprayed on the crop. Wheat, paddy, sugarcane, all generally they are affected by fungal diseases. The leaves and stems of these plants, they will get scars and spots on them, particularly in groundnut. Fungus causes a disease called Tikka disease. A farmer removes the affected plants from the plant and puts them under the plant only. A farmer removes the affected leaves of the plant and puts them aside in the field. The farmers remove the affected leaves from the plant and puts them in dump and cover with the soil. A farmer removes the affected leaves from the plant and burns them. These are all the various methods the farmers they follow for controlling pests. Some farmers they spray pesticides like Dithin M45 and Eldrin also. The next step is applying manure. Farmers add manure to the soil for good growth and good yield of the crop. The main components required by the plants for the growth are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. These manures are available in two different ways, natural manures and artificial or chemical fertilizers. Natural manures are also called as biofertilizers. These are made up of with plant waste and animal waste. The plant and animal waste are collected at the end of the village and in a pit and they are allowed to decompose by soil bacteria like Acetobacter, Nitrobacter, Nostoc, Anabina etc. After certain days this waste will be turned into natural manure. Chemical fertilizers are also added which are made in the factories for growth of the plants. They are called as urea, DAP, superphosphate, potash etc. The chemical fertilizers contain less humus but more amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, potash etc. They are made in factories and they contain inorganic salts whereas natural fertilizers contain organic waste which are decomposed by microorganisms 
they are prepared in open places they contain good quality of humus which will not spoil the soil less amount of nitrogen phosphorus and potash are present next comes the irrigation supply of water to the crop it is called as irrigation irrigation is carried out in different types while cultivation of the paddy furrow irrigation basin irrigation modern techniques like drink drip irrigation system sprinkler irrigation system are carried out to give water supply to the crop but in ancient practices of agriculture farmers used to cultivate lands by using mota yatam chain pump etc weeding is an important process in the cultivation of paddy weeds are unwanted plants which grow along with the crops and compete with the nutrients supplied to the main crop space and water supplied to the main crop so that is why removal of weeds enhances the growth of the crop and increases the yield of the crop parthenium is a highly dangerous weed plant its pollen grains causes allergy the weeding is done by weed harrow the next step is harvesting collection of collection of grains from the crop by cutting the matured plants is called harvesting harvesting of paddy can be done by hand using a sickle after cutting the grain is spread out to dry in the field for 2 to 3 days before harvesting the pachchi kankulu or ripened grains are given to the sparrows which are best friends of the farmers the sparrows they eat the worms which destroy the crop and help in the give crop yield for the farmers so that is why the first crop is given to the best friends of the farmers the harvesting is done in various processes like by threshing beating the dried plants on rough surface winnowing by releasing the grains from a certain height thus the husk which is light in weight blown away with the air and the grains come for down by using modern harvesters and in some places even on roads also the harvesting is done storage of grains until the grains which are cultivated till they reach the consumers or until the farmers sell the crop for a good value they store the crops in cold storage units previously or in olden days the rice grains or all other grains they were stored in bamboo bins the place where grains are stored are called as granaries in the cold storage units even vegetables fruits tamarind chilies other products are also stored as the temperature is very low here vegetables fruits can also be kept for a long time in the cold storage units i hope all of you understood the topic thank you